Andreas Craig is an associate professor in the Department of Defence Studies at King's College in London. He joins us now via Skype. Good to see you again, Andreas. Let's talk mm -hmm. through what's happening now on the ground just outside Mosul and what the counter-terrorist units will be looking for. Right. Um, so the battle has now actually entered the ground zero, which is the outskirts of Mosul. Um, we've seen an advance along the highway connecting Mosul to Erbil, Highway 2, and um, for the last couple of days you've seen already these counter-terrorist forces pushing towards that, uh, this street, uh, down that angle towards the city centre. And um, they're obviously now actually facing real resistance because prior to that they've been fighting in the villages, which was already quite difficult. But now they're entering into a city which is obviously a lot denser, more densely populated than all the villages they're fighting in before. Um, and the, what they're in for is a how is urban warfare, street by street, house for house, booby traps, and potentially a lot of um, ambushes that ISIS was able, probably able to prepare over the last two years. Because let's not forget, they have built, they have made a fortress out of uh, out of uh, Mosul. They have they have all kinds of tunnel systems. Um, and so far, you know, they have they have used anything they have to fight uh, to fight these counterterrorism units um, who try to enter the city. And we've seen the body count rising of the Iraqi forces. Are they up for the job? Are they going to be spooked? Um, I don't think they will be spooked. I mean, what we've seen two years ago when we saw a collapse of the local forces in, 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 in view of the advance of ISIS fighters will not happen again. The, the fighters that are being deployed right now, the units that are being deployed, these counterterrorism units, are a lot more effective. Um, they have a lot, they're operationally a lot more effective. And I think they will probably, they will resist and they will, they will keep on fighting despite the losses. Um, they're better equipped, they're better trained, um, and they have U.S. advisors as well as U.S. air power overhead that they can tap into if they need to. So they're a lot more effective than the regular Iraqi armed forces. Tell me what the thinking will be as far as human shields are concerned. We heard a little earlier today that some, you know, tens of thousands had been mobilized by ISIL, possibly to be, to be used in battle as human shields. I mean, how do you get around something like this and what are the expectations there? Exactly. Uh, this is probably the biggest concern right now um, because most of the people have stayed in Mosul. I mean, internally, some didn't decided not to fled to flee. Uh, others were forced to stay. Um, they've been inside their houses for almost two days now, uh, and they will inevitably be um, in between the, the fighting, and they will probably get caught up into, in it. Uh, what will ISIL, ISIS do in order to uh, to keep um, the United States air power to drop their bombs as well as other allies shooting artillery is obviously continue fighting in these uh, civilian environments, which means you can't use mortars, you can't really use artillery, and it's very difficult to actually use uh, bombs because all that these bombs do is they have an area effect, which means they will... Uh, they will cause collateral damage to their to their vicinity, which in, uh, inevitably you'll you'll call, you'll have collateral damage and people will get killed. The worst scenario, Andreas Craig. Thank you. Thank you.